one U.S. amateur, seven professional majors, a lifelong passion for the game of golf, and an equally long affinity for the masses is what's earned Arnold Palmer the regal title of the king. And the king is responsible for a great many things in the world of golf, the dramatic rise in popularity, as well as the establishment of the Champions Tour are just a few, but he is perhaps best known for possessing the humility of the common man. However, his career has been anything but common, and the passion he maintains in his constant quest for improvement is something that Arnie has always had in common with every man who's ever played the game. That passion finally led Arnie to Roger Fredericks, a pioneer in the emerging field of fitness and flexibility in how it relates to improved performance in golf. Tonight on Academy Live, Arnie will share with us some of the secrets he currently pursues in his ongoing effort to play the best golf he can possibly play. And Roger Fredericks will tell us why it's never too late, nor too early, to prepare yourself for a lifetime of better golf. We become the Army as Arnie takes the lead, right now on Academy Live. As many times before, and he's explained it to you probably, Mr. Palmer, uh, in depth on a number of occasions, but... You firmly believe that it's it's never too early nor too late to increase your, your conditioning and your flexibility. Well, I always feel like you, when you're getting old, you have an excuse. And what Roger is telling all of us is that we don't have an excuse. There's no reason to think that you can't remain flexible. And he just said that. And, and I'm finding that as I continue my exercises and stretching as I have, uh, my flexibility is increasing and, and of course like every other golfer in the world I'm thinking well if I can increase the flexibility range of motion then I can get back to hitting the golf ball where I once did and and uh, I'm just uh, stubborn enough to think that that might happen and I'm continuing to work on it what else would I do I really enjoy playing golf and I enjoy the competition so I I don't think that uh, we need to let age be a criteria for what we do. How arduous is your workout, your stretching routine? How many minutes a day? How tough is it on you now? And are your friends that you play golf with on a day-to-day -day basis out at Bay Hill, are they subscribing to it now that they've seen the benefit for you? <laughs> well, I see them uh, going to the gym more often now than they used to, and, and of course, I'm encouraging them to do that. But uh, I do, if I'm traveling, I have... Uh, I have a tape that uh, Roger gave me on well, a little portable DVD, and I, uh, I play that sometimes in the morning, and I go through it pretty quickly. Uh, it's not a big, long, uh, rigorous type thing. I do it uh, in less than 30 minutes almost every day, and when I'm at home, uh, like this morning, uh, maybe 40, maybe even if, I'm, if I feel a lot, I go to an hour, but that's not necessary. Uh, he will tell you that that you can do the things that you have to do in 30 or less minutes each day. All right. On the practice tee, hitting some of those key positions, and then also doing some static stretches as well. And there, <laughs> that's got to hurt. We'll be back in a minute. Pretty much, my whole thing is really trying to educate people. And I learned a long time ago by failure, if you just tell somebody to go stretch or work out, and you, there's really no education, or they don't know why they're doing it, they probably won't stick with it. But I thought, but for me with him was education. And um, one of the things, like I said just in the last segment, that happens to just about everybody, especially senior tour players, um, they start getting too strong and too dominant here. And he already, all of his life, as we all know, was so strong especially up in his upper pecs and his arms, and we see him come out of the rough and how he just, you know, blocked it. And I mean, the problem is all the miles he's walked. One day I was, had nothing to do, and I was think, trying to figure out, you probably walked somewhere between 125,000 and 150,000 miles. Not to mention that, and that just works the quadriceps and hips so much. Plus, he's been bent over in this flexion position, which strengthens the hips. Um, for Lord knows how many millions of times. Then he's been traveling on airplanes and sitting down millions of miles an hour. So what's happened, especially with him, he's got, he got so st actually too strong this way. And that's really one of the things I encourage people to do because the, the fitness movement is so strong now. And I see so many people that are in flexion this way, which simply means they're too strong. When you see a guy walk like this, 
very common, you know right off the bat he's over dominant in his quadriceps and hip flexors. That person, nine out of ten times, will not be able to stay down to the shot. When they come into here, they'll pick up. And what happened with him, I was able to, it's what, I, what I'm saying is what they do, a lot of these people decide to work out. Now, they're already too strong here, and what do they do? They go into the gym, more bench presses, more sit-ups, more push-ups, and that stuff is fine. But those things will already over-strengthen um, and already strengthen upper body or, or hips there. So they're strengthening their dysfunctions. So one of the things I really wanted to do with him is get off for a while all of the forward anterior stretching here and start to stretch this up, open it out, and then eventually get into strengthening the glutes and the hamstrings and the anterior, excuse me, the posterior parts of the back. And one of the stretches I really have him concentrate a lot is really for the upper spine up in here. You open and it up, as you say. No question. It's got to be open here. And once it opens up, that right shoulder will get right behind the ball and sink down here. When the, when the upper part of the spine in the golf swing rotates approximately 60% more than the lower part of the spine. So this thoracic kyphosis is what it's called. When they get the rounded shoulders and they're this way and they try to turn, they can't do it because it's just too blocked here. So I've really tried to help him open up the pecs in here. Not just the pecs, because you have to, let me talk about this, I think, in the next segment. You have to work all of the muscle chains. But I'd like to have him show us one of the stretches that we do do quite a bit. I'm called an upper spinal floor twist, if you don't mind. Do you mind? You got that. I can't imagine how many people at home right now are on their living room floor trying some of these stretches. Oh, yeah. They're seeing that Mr. Palmer do them. They're going to try them okay. as well. Okay. Now, this, wow. is, this is the one everybody loves. It feels real good. This is the way Roger does it from here to here. There you go. Just See, now what happens, I, I guarantee you this, I have a lot of video That's of this. When we, when we first started with him, he literally couldn't get right here. Really? This, was, this, was, this was how locked up he had gotten because he was over strong in the frontal area. Now he can go all the way down here. Now, just by sitting here, just by lying there and doing nothing else, we have gravity taking over, and that's relaxing the muscles. And these pecs now have no choice but to start to relax. And he just made a, now it's dropping there. And now it lets go. Wow. And you see, that that's... So it's not trying to force a stretch. It's a matter of just working with it and breathing. All, of, all a flexible muscle is is a relaxed muscle. Nothing more, nothing less. And a relaxed muscle is just one that gets oxygen to it. So this is really paramount um, to opening up the upper spinal twist so that we can get, you know, get rid of those rounded shoulders and make a much more effective and smoother and deeper shoulder turn. That's okay. great. Beautiful. And when I got down here, I used to not be able to get up. <laughs> I was going to say, you popped up like you're 16 yeah. years old again there, Mr. Palmer. Right now.